Hey, what's up? Silas here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about identifying information and being more uh, more careful or more picky about the information you get from certain sources. Even if it's a very respected source, even if it's somebody you look up to, somebody who in other situations you've gotten very positive and uh, beneficial and accurate information from, you should also question every single piece of information. Not every single piece, but sometimes you also just say like, okay, wait, are they right or do I think they're right because of who they are, who the person is saying this? So to start off, um, I'm going to go with this this meme that you see on the screen right now, or this tweet, this screen capture of this tweet. It was by Stefan Molinier, who, if you guys have been following my channel, you could prob and you know about him, you could probably surmise that I've watched a lot of his material and taken some cues from how he presents his material and how he approaches things. And I have learned a lot from him and still consider him to be a very important thinker, public intellectual, a public intellectual philosopher in um, the public sphere right now. He's doing a lot of really good work. Um, definitely highly suggest you check out his audiobook, Real um, Real Time Relationships, and um, also universally preferable behavior. Anyway, so on to this tweet. Um, so like that's what I'm saying. Despite what I'm going to talk about, this tweet still consider him to be one of the top top out there. So anyway, he has this tweet from Newsweek. And it's uh, a woman's pregnant woman's belly. I guess it's got some OB, not OBGYN, but uh, one of the a doctor or someone is checking her stomach, and then it says, "Having kids may literally shave years off of your life." And then Stefan Molinier tweet says, "Another friendly reminder from a failing news outlet that white people really shouldn't have children." So someone posted this in a social media group and said, "Like, oh yeah, how about this?" And I just went out and asked, "How is this targeting white people?" How is this a racial situation? Is this really a racial situation? And I got into back and forth with somebody about, somebody mentioned white genocide, and I said, how is it a white genocide? They pulled back from genocide, and they hinted that it might be a white suicide, but then it's like, okay, then who's doing it to who? Like, just because you have this out there. Newsweek is an international organization. It's an international newspaper. This is published online in the United States of America. It's a multiracial society. The United States of America, it's not only white people that can read, it's not only white people that read Newsweek. The demographics for Newsweek, it might be something like, um, what's it called? It might even be like 75% white people, but this still doesn't mean it's like, hey, white people don't have kids. This is an article out there. I've seen similar articles talking about people's decisions when they have kids here in Kenya. I've seen things like this in black, um, black targeted magazines like Chat. You have these kind of sites like. So this isn't necessarily a racial things. Is there a situation in society where white guilt and things like that? I've talked about videos. I've talked about that in videos before. So yes, I do understand there is a certain targeting of the white community, whatever you want to define white as, people with historical, with recently historical European ancestry of a certain, um, I don't wanna say Caucasoid, but uh, certain culture, certain behavior. But then in most of these situations, this Newsweek article, it's by white people also. So it's not a white genocide because it's just not. This, and also with the genocide thing, how many genocides do you know of that can be solved by just having more than two kids per couple? I haven't heard of any that has, so this, anyway. I have a previous video on that, the Dear White Genocide video. Check that out if you haven't seen it. But some of these occasional hysterias you see come out, and I thought it was Black Hysteria Month and not like White Hysteria Year. Can't you come on, white people? Let black people have one month where they get a lot more hysteric, and you guys can hold back on the hysteria. And talking about Black Hysteria, there was this thing between LeBron James and this uh, news anchor from um, Fox News Channel, Fox News Network, Laura Ingram. She said, shut up and dribble to him. And then some people came out and were talking about how it's racist. And I've mentioned that before in a previous video, but here's an actual quote that Laura Ingram gave. I'm going to read this out. It's going to be on the screen. This was in response to people coming out and saying, him saying shut up and dribble, her saying shut up and dribble was, uh, what's it called, racist. So here we go. In, 20, in 2003, I wrote a New York Times bestseller called Shut Up and Sing, in which I criticized celebrities like Dixie Chicks and Barbara Streisand, who were trashing then-president George W. Bush. I have used a variation of that title for more than 15 years to respond to performers who sound off in politics. 
I've told Robert De Niro, shut up and act, Jimmy Kimmel, to shut up and make us laugh, and just this week, I told San Antonio Spurs', Spurs' Greg Popovich to shut up and coach. If pro athletes and entertainers want to freelance as political pundits, then they should not be surprised when they are called out for insulting politicians. There was no racial intent in my remarks. False defamatory charges of racism are a transparent attempt to immunize entertainment and sports elites from scrutiny and criticism. Additionally, we stated on my show that these comments came from an ESPN podcast, which was not the case. The content was unaffiliated with ESPN. So I guess that end, she's just clearing it out, saying the sources, but that's that. even just that end part of them saying it was from ESPN is another show that people don't really care about accuracy in this situation. She started with the Dixie Chicks and Barbra Streisand. In that situation, were they, was she being racist? If it was a black announcer doing that, like Joy something on uh, MSNBC, if she had said that to anybody saying anything about Barack Obama, would she have been racist? And maybe. But, <laughs> but the actual comment, shut up and dribble, as you can see from this, is a thing where it's like, shut up and sing. And in the previous thing, um, the previous video where I mentioned this, LeBron James had said that Laura Ingram also said something about him not having graduated high school and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then um, he said, I wish he had studied more. I wish he had studied more to figure out that I graduated high school. She was inaccurate about that. But when he was asked if her comments were racist, he did not respond to it. He did not address the point and say, no, it wasn't. He just started going off on a tangent about the things that he's done and the level of importance that he has. Someone like Greg Popovich here was talking about how just recently he said something about LeBron James still dredging up this Laura Ingram thing because it still can't die. They still have to keep pushing this out. Was talking about how LeBron James is an amazing person. He's like a Black Panther type person. And I had a previous video also talking about this where I'm saying, look, you already had LeBron James, so you didn't need a Black Panther for you to be inspired. If it was seeing somebody who looked like you doing some amazing things, you've had athletes, especially the athlete in the athletic fields. Black people have had a lot of people that way. And then it goes from that where you have these athletes doing things and they do things outside of them being sports, of them being athletes. They are more than athletes, but in most cases, most of the people looking up to them only look at the athletic part of it. So I think it's a positive thing that LeBron James is coming out there and showing that he can do these other things. But I think they've always had athletes who do these other things. But it's the media, it's the sports media that focuses on the basketball aspect of it. It's the athletes themselves that understand me focusing on this basketball aspect, me focusing on this athletic aspect of it is what makes me have the ability, have the standpoint, have the money to be able to go out there and do these other things. There's nothing wrong with that, saying my profession, my pastime is a big part of who I am. It's a big part of what I'm going to be judged on. Just as if Laura Ingram just started talking, like example, she was talking about his sports background, but because she's a political pundit and not a sports analyst, she's not going to understand. She might not know about his background. So when LeBron James is saying, ah, I wish she had researched more, why should she research more? Just like in a situation where now if you're talking about politics, if you understand your position, then maybe he should research more. But... Um, now, speaking about this dropping out of, uh, I'm not dropping out, but going from high school to um, the NFL, I mean, going from high school to play basketball and not going to get a uh, higher education or whatnot, they say, what is the purpose of a higher education? It's to get a better job. So if you come out straight from high school and you already can get that professional job, it's a positive thing to do. And another previous thing that was being talked about, another recent thing that was being talked about was um, some coach came out and was talking about how unfortunate it is that the current situation of the NBA requiring players to play one year of college or being of a certain age before they can enter the NBA and so, talking about how that is also racist because it disproportionately affects black people. And now going back to that white genocide thing, why I was asking this person was saying, oh, well, this article, this article about saying if you get pregnant, it actually reduces your time of, um, what's it called? It reduces your time of um, of life. It reduces your lifespan. How okay? First of all, there's actually an article going against that that I'll leave links there to below to that. Sorry, I'll leave links below to the article that actually goes against this, stating that there actually are some studies that show that hey, actually people who have kids seem to live longer than people who don't. But anyway, back to this point. 
So somebody says, because this is a Newsweek and most of the people who read Newsweek are white and then most of the white people are the ones who are not having kids, since it's disproportionately affecting white people, that means it's some sort of white genocide. This is part of the ongoing white genocide. Then I ask you, look, if abortions are easily accessible to everyone equally, all races in the United States of America, but black people happen to have abortions a lot more than any other race, is abortions, is the whole abortion epidemic in the United States of America, and I would consider it an epidemic, is that some sort of black genocide? No, because the black women themselves are choosing to have these abortions in 95% of the cases. Just like in this case, the white women get the information that's out there and then they are choosing in a much higher percentage than other races to not have kids. So it's not a white genocide, it's not a racial thing, it's not a black genocide, even counting those questionable comments that are being referred to Margaret Sanger, but I don't think those are what genocide should be referred to. I, I think a term like genocide should really be kept for what genocides actually are. I don't know what you guys think about that specific um, that specific point I'm trying to make there. I was thinking of including this with a separate video where I talk about um, why I think it's actually very positive. I've talked about making this video for a while, why it's very positive that people like LeBron James are speaking out, that celebrities are speaking out, but I'll have that in a separate video as it's kind of a separate kind of um, topic. I think it's a bit disjointed to this because this one was focusing on the whole racism thing and questioning, okay, Am I considering this is racist just because I have some kind of prior idea of, oh, Laura Laura is on this show, Laura Ingram is on Fox News, Fox News is a racist network. If black people are telling me that it's racist, it has to be racist, I haven't actually listened to what I'm saying. Then it goes to like a Stefan Molyneux side where I normally agree with a lot of the things that he says, but he says this and then it is part, there is a general thing in society where there is some kind of like white guilt pushing thing where it's like white men have done all these bad things. White culture is not something that you can be proud of. And yeah, if you want to identify, first of all, but one thing before I get into this, please, if you're going to say identify what white is, I need to do a separate video talking about this. How do you guys define white? Because I still haven't really understood how most people define white or black. Those are two certain terms that I haven't necessarily liked or understood. And that's why I'm kind of considering bringing Negro back because I think Negro comes back more to like the whole racial aspect where you can understand like, yeah, these are the Negroes across the board and it doesn't have any cultural connotations to it. Like you can't appropriate Negroness. You either are Negro or you're not. It's not something you can affect if you understand. It's not something you can put on. You can't act Negro. You just are Negro, but you can act black. If that makes any sense. And I think you can act white but you just can't, like, I can't just all of a sudden not be from, be like Caucasian, for example. If, if that makes any sense. Okay, <laughs> so I have these little tangents when I'm trying to get these things finished up. Okay, so that's a separate video. This video is talking about getting the sources. So just because some athletes or some people who you look up to say what she said was racist doesn't mean it's racist. Just because someone you look up to said this has something to do with targeting white people doesn't necessarily mean it's white people. Does that mean there aren't actual racial issues in the world? No, they completely are. Does that mean there aren't actually issues towards white people in the world? That means, no, it means they actually still are. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with those two things. It doesn't say those things don't exist. But I think if you muddy the waters, if you dilute the situations, and you start getting people's fervor up saying this is racist, I react in this way to the LeBron James thing, it does a disservice to a situation that actually are racist. If you start focusing on Newsweek posting this article as an issue like, hey, they're targeting white people here, then you start actually losing your energy to actually put that towards places where people in this group of white, this tribe of whiteness or this collection, this collective that you might consider white are being targeted in certain ways. So you can focus on that kind of situation. Um, last but not least, Wanted to add something else. Yeah, so in some of these situations, I just think like, <laughs> I've had I've had some some very interesting comments in uh, some of the recent videos that I made, especially that video about the Black Panther reaction, um, <laughs> where some some of the comments are talking about the first twelve minutes that they did that I thought were clearly satirical, but some people were taking that material and reacting to that and having very visceral reactions to it. And to what was said there, I just kind of brushed those off because, first of all, 
even if they were talking about the parts where they're talking about me, talking about my appearance and things like that, that has doesn't doesn't really change who I am personally. Now the part that they're addressing is the satirical part. That's not even me. That's a character that I was trying to play in that situation, trying to convey this. Uh, it was trying to do like a Poe of sorts. But uh, so if they're addressing that, I can't take that personally. If somebody calls me the N-word and something like that, I'm like, yeah, does that make me that word? No, it doesn't necessarily. So if somebody's being racist in that sense, in a situation where I don't necessarily identify with that thing, people saying like, oh, you're not, you're, you're a shame for Africans. You're not representing Africans that well. You failed for that. Like you should be this and that. I'm like, I'm not trying to represent Africans. I'm representing myself. I'm making a video about things that I'm interested in. So in these situations, I think that's something that I might be lacking. Some people may have a general connection to this larger scope of things, this larger scope of blackness or whiteness that they feel like if something like that is attacked, they personally feel under attack. And there may be other things I may be able to develop and figure out what my tribe is. And I think I'd understand that more if somebody's attacking a direct family member. But yeah, that's just something that, as I've mentioned before, I think I'm lacking on that I'm trying to understand why people find so important in that sense. And um, yeah, so what do you guys think about this? Do you think either of these things are racist and do you think I'm wrong? Or do you think it's a context? like? You, in these situations, if you just switch the races, I think a good way to kind of understand is something racist or just racial, even not racial, but just say, if that thing was said and that person happened to be another race, let's say Laura Ingram happened to be black when she said that, would it still be considered racist? Like in this situation with uh, Stefan Molinier tweet, I don't even know how it happened to be different situation. If this happened to be in um, BET.com article, would it happen to be racist towards black people? You know, that's the kind of thing that I'm asking. Now, if Greg Popovich, who just recently said LeBron James is like uh, Black Panther, instead of saying, well, he was Kangs, he's also the Kang, <laughs> the Kangs. He's also the king of the NBA. That's his kind of, uh, one of his nicknames. Now, if he had said he's like Black Panther, or not the Black Panther, I mean, he's like Batman, or he's like Aquaman, would that be different? Like, by him saying Black Panther, does that make him a racist? Because he's like, yeah, he's like a black superhero. Why isn't he just a superhero? And um, one last thing, talking about superheroes and the blackness situation. Uh, I just saw this video by Drake, uh, Drizzy Drake. Um, he's a rapper from, I think, Toronto and Atlanta or something. He's, he's half Jewish, half black. So I guess he's not half white because Jewish people aren't white, according to some people. But... Anyway, <laughs> so he had this video called God's Plan. I'll also leave a link below to that where he was going out and giving people money, helping people out with school, helping people with groceries. And I thought it was just like a really good thing. And there's stuff like this out there. You know, there's people who have certain things where you might not really consider it positive, but then they do other things out there with it. And I think that's, uh, that's something that you see in the United States of America and the rest of the world that I think is not as noticed as possible, where... LeBron James has done a lot, but a lot of other people have done a lot. And that's just the continued examples that I want to say that, look, you don't need superheroes, artificial superheroes, to actually have these people to look up to. There's heroes all over the place doing heroic things, doing things that you can look up to, doing impressive things out there. And I uh, just wanted to give a shout out to Drake on that one and uh, put some shine on that. I know the video already has like millions of views, but it's a pretty cool thing. I've never really disliked Drake that much. Uh, not at all, actually. He's, he's, I, th I think he's a pretty good uh, performer, good singer, like his lyrics. But yeah, just wanted to put, add that here. And uh, that's it for now. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm probably going to go in and record that other video right after this. And then you guys can let me know if you watch both of them, if they should have been in one video or you prefer the separate things. Some people have mentioned that they do like this longer forms, but I'll also try to see if I can release some shorter ones. Okay, that's it for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Links below to the merchandise store and more. Goodbye. So, on to this whole shut up and X thing. I think this is done a lot. You hear analysts saying, this player should not really be complaining about not getting enough calls towards his way because, hey, look at this, just shut up and play. Shut up and already be happy with what you're doing. Be happy with your results. Then you have people on the other end on players saying, hey, I don't like how the game has changed. Now you can't do this. In the past, 
we could do this and get away with it, or we could do this and just play. So why don't these refs, why don't these uh, people who are calling the game, making the rules, why don't they just shut up and preside? Why don't they just shut up and ref and let us actually play the game? So this whole idea, you need to add the racial connotation for it. This whole comparing to things in the past or saying, hey, we prefer it this way, or we think we're better at this, and we think you're kind of coming into our zone while you're doing this, you're kind of disrupting what we do or the flow of something by doing this, by not sticking to your role. That's a regular thing that a lot of people do, and people should kind of dial back on this whole racial or adding this level of animosity into it when it seems that they do on a regular basis.